What's up friends, welcome back for another movie reaction, keeping it horror themed with a festive slasher, the original Black Christmas, and I'm very excited to see this one. I've been excited to see it for a while because I've needed my palate cleansed from seeing the 2019 remake or reboot, still not exactly sure what you can consider it, but one of the worst movies I've ever seen, and so I don't know how similar the story of that one is to the original, but even if it was the exact same, I remember so little from that movie because it's been blocked out of my memory and so I'm still looking forward to getting into this one and no better time to watch it than Christmas time and so hopefully you all enjoy watching along with me for it. if you do definitely consider leaving a thumbs up it helps the video out and of course you can check out the full length reaction on patreon link for that in the description below but without further ado let's hop into the original black Christmas I'm really hoping this one's good though because I don't feel like I've ever really found a great Christmas horror film legit horror film not like gremlins type thing where it's more fun i've seen some but none have really blown me away so far <laughs> dude i love the camera move man this is great very precise Oh crap, man, so there's no suspense building at all, or I guess no slow burn suspense. We get right into the killer, I presume. <laughs> Dude, that's so creepy. Love the little breathing sound effects we get. Sends shivers down your spine. Mom, hang on, I can't hear you. Operator, I can't hear what's coming from the other end. Come on. Oh gosh, man, he's getting in there quick. The cinematography has been excellent so far, though. I'm very surprised. Wasn't expecting it. I have some stuff to do in the afternoon. Come on, you gotta be kidding. And I love how much we're getting from the perspective of the killer. Really good at creating tension. Hello? Hello? Hey, quiet! It's him again! The Mona! What, bro? Don't tell me he's been calling him repeatedly, this killer. That'd be so creepy. He's expanded his act. <laughs> man, they are way less freaked out than I would be, man. That'd be so terrifying. Let me like your pretty piggy. Listen, you pervert, why don't you go over to Lamba Kai? They could use a little of this. Jeez, well, they certainly set up this guy to be the ultimate creep. Dude has massive issues. You creep! I'm going to kill you. Jeez, <laughs> oh, what an abrupt end. That would keep you on edge. That was sick. I really don't think you should provoke somebody like that, Barb. Guys, minor league in the city, I get two of those a day. You really are too much, Barb. <laughs> I like how they've given us some good character moments here so we can kind of figure out the personalities of everybody. Barb seems a little too reckless. Stores must take hockey lessons this time of year. I'm not going to a bunch of Mrs. Mac, come in the other room. We've got a surprise for you. <laughs> Was her name Mrs. Mac? Unexpected, always sunny connection. Where have you been? Mrs. Mac's been looking all over for you, little puss. Hello. Aw, oh, cute kitty. That cat better not have anything happen to it, otherwise I'm gonna be upset. Protected at all costs. Oh my gosh, dude. I got chills from that. That was such a great shot. I thought I saw something there, but I noticed his hand at the last second. Dude, this is really, really well shot. Freaking terrifying just seeing his face barely visible behind that. Who is it? Claude? Who is it? <laughs> oh my gosh, man. On oh, what a cut right there. Jeez, they have no idea. That was an effective scene. Love how we still haven't seen him even with that. Anything for you girls? Because it's Christmas. Hey. Uh -huh. Oh no, dude, the cat. <laughs> of course it dies, gosh dang it. I'm glad that we just saw the shadow of it though, not the actual cat. 
Hello? Hello, it's Jess there, please. Wait a second, Peter. Jess, it's for you. Oh, thank goodness. She knows who it is. I was worried it was the bad guy just pretending. Let's bring Peter in here, too. More the merrier. I've got to talk to you. Why don't you tell me now? Because I want to talk to you face to face. I haven't been to bed in three nights. I'm just not the mood to be playing games. Is she wanting to talk to him about the phone calls? Because that's my guess. She's obviously freaked out about it. I didn't mean to sound short with you. I, I guess I'm just exhausted, okay? It's okay. I love you. I know. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> oh, pulling the old Han Solo on him. Doesn't return the I love you. I assume she does, though. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking brilliant. Both times I thought they were going to get us with a scare right there. They could get us here, though. <laughs> they know exactly what they're doing. Perfect way to create some atmosphere and some stress. Just toying with us. Yeah? Jeez, dude, poor freaking girl. Didn't stand a chance being the first one. Was that the killer singing? That was sufficiently unsettling. I'm surprised he's spacing him out though. I thought it was gonna be once the killings start, they don't let up till the end. Man, the camera work in this is really surprising me. Coming into it, I was thinking, partly just based off the name and everything, that it was gonna be just kind of more of a B-horror type thing. But this is really well made. I was supposed to meet my daughter here at one o'clock. It's half past now and she's still not here. Her name's Claire Harrison, do you know her? Yeah, I think so. Ah, oh, dang it, this poor guy's gonna have his heart broken. But that's how the ball's gonna get rolling once he comes to visit. Place isn't far, I'll tell you how to get there. Ho, ho, ho. Santa, please. You're supposed to be going away with me for the weekend, god damn it. <laughs> really just saying this in front of all the kids, my gosh. Worst Santa ever. Isn't Santa naughty? Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Dude, fit in every word in the book, in the swear book. Who's this? Uh, uh, that's uh, a friend of Claire's from the town, uh, Chris Hayden. We didn't really get to see that picture up close, so I wonder if that's significant. I remember his name, though, Chris Hayden. I'm sure you'll find her at the fraternity house. I could show you the way. I, I have to go to a store near there. I know where it is. <laughs> she's a real one man protecting her dignity, even if she's gone. Come on, Claude, I gotta go! Great framing, caught red-handed. She can't put on a front anymore. Her personality is not too far off Mrs. Mac from Always Sunny. She definitely talks more, though. Yo, that was an excellent shot. Interested where we go from here. I'm pregnant. <laughs> Jess, that's fantastic. I don't want it. You don't want it? No. I want to have an abortion. I was looking closer at Peter because it almost looked like Martin McDowell or something like that. Clockwork Orange guy. But that's not what I was expecting her to talk to him about. Don't you ever consider anyone but yourself? I've thought this out very carefully and I know what I'm gonna do. Do you know how important this afternoon is to me? Why did you just get out of here? Dang man, it, introducing a lot of storylines and conflict, but I like it. Keeps things interesting. That makes it extra stressful for her though if she gets to be a target at some point. Hello? Oh hell, not again. I'm sorry, you have the wrong number. What your mother and I must know is, where did you put the baby? Pitchy? You've got the wrong number. Bro, what? This guy is so creepy. Who was the other voice? You must know it. Dude, I love those phone call scenes. I don't think I remember there being any sort of phone call stuff in the 2019 one. But again, that whole experience is a blur to me. Could you just give it to me one at a time? Well, what the hell are you planning to do about it? Shut up. You know, for a public servant, I think your attitude really sucks. <laughs> Tell him, Barb. I think they have all the right in the world to be a little upset right now. 90% of the time, they're at a cabin somewhere with a boyfriend. That's not much consolation. 
Oh, here, Mrs. Mack, let me help. Gotta get Mr. Reynolds to fix this door. A uh, little subtle introduction of an issue there. No doubt that's gonna come back into play, maybe for their benefit. Could you give me the number at the sorority house? Yeah, sure. Fellatio 20880. It's a new exchange, F E. How do you spell it? <laughs> Just freaking trolling him. How does this guy not know what's going on right now? Chris! Ah, oh, we finally meet Chris. If he's just chilling out here in the open, though, maybe there's no issue with him. I thought there was going to be some mystery. Her father came to pick her up at one o'clock today and she didn't show. So he went down to the police station with Phil and Bob. What happened? They didn't take it seriously. Well, we got another friend on board now, so that's good. They're gonna lay into the cops, though, when they actually realize she was killed, not just off somewhere. Maybe it's more of an abstract piece, but it sounds to me like he may be making a few mistakes. Also, based off the sweat, I don't think he's happy with himself. Man, every scene has such creative angles and moves. Turns an ordinary scene into something interesting. Well, um... Oh, I don't have a good feeling about his chances right there. I assume the discussion with Jess kind of threw him off his game. I phoned Melody Green, that's her best friend. They hadn't seen her all day. She's only 13 years old, Lieutenant, and my husband's a trucker. He's out on the road and... Jeez, bro, this killer's getting everybody. And to go for someone that young, that's so dark. It's my guess, though. Maybe it's unrelated. I want to know why nothing's being done about Claire Harrison being missing and why this idiot gets away with saying the things he does. Alright, come on in. Finally, man, someone's willing to do something. Shout out to this guy. Obviously, it's too late for Claire, but the quicker they start finding clues or info, the better. Did you know that there's a certain species of turtle that can screw for three days without stopping? You don't believe me? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your contribution, Barb. That was the last piece of the puzzle. 24 hours a day. <laughs> three days? I'm lucky if I get three minutes. Do you know how I know this? I went down to the zoo and I watched them. <laughs> Dude, Barb, what is going on? She is not on the same planet. <laughs> Gosh, man, what an interaction. The actress who plays her is doing a good job, though. Gives her so much personality. If she's dead, you're gonna blame me. That's what we're all thinking. Why doesn't someone just come right out and say it? Mr. Harrison. I don't give a shit about Mr. Harrison. Barb, why don't you go upstairs and lie down for a while? Ah, oh, jeez, what a roller coaster right now. I'm surprised they haven't tried going in a room, but it has only been a day, so maybe they just assume since she didn't answer, there's no reason to go in. Gosh, dude, that's painful. That piano looks so nice. Guess that tells us exactly how his performance went. It won't be long, Mrs. Mack. All right, dear. I just want to tell you that I'm going to go to my sister's for the holidays, so I might not be here when you get back. Oh, no, dude. I feel like because she's saying she might not be here, that's perfect opportunity for the killer to take her out and not have anybody worry. Janice most likely came through this park. There'll be two sets of dogs. Spread out and follow them. Not sure what they're gonna find, but if they do manage to maybe find this girl's body, is that gonna make them take it more seriously with Claire? Always love to pop. Oh, dude, the cat is still alive, thank goodness. What was he carrying out before then? Maybe I misunderstood what the shadow was. Oh man, this is good stuff right here. I'm on edge. I guess we don't really know if the killer's in the house right now because it hasn't shown us. Claude, are you up here? Claude, now look what you made me do. Oh my gosh, dude, so freaking close. She is dead for sure. Love the quick movement we caught right there. Claude, I'm gonna have you fixed. Oh, it's in the attic. That's where her body was. So that's why they didn't notice anything in her room. Oh, 
Oh my, what a gruesome way to go, poor woman. Hey! <laughs> Such a genius cut, that was so well done. Love the way they did that scene. Yikes, this guy is so insane. He freaks me out. They've done such a great job building him up as a villain. Maybe they found the body. That's the only explanation I can think of. Once again, good editing. <laughs> Man, this is so good. I love that they didn't even show us the body so our imagination just fills in the pieces. Must have been so mangled for everyone to react like that. Hello? Wait, is he just playing a joke or is he legit? Can he not control himself? Yeah, it's me. It's me. Who are you? I know what you're doing! Filthy Billy! <laughs> what a shot right here, so up close. Had so much intensity. The call moments get better and better. Mrs. Matt, are you home? Mrs. Matt, are you up there? Also, I guess it is very fitting that I wore the Scream hat, considering that Scream is centered around a lot of phone calls as well. Which I wonder if they took their idea from this for just that specific portion of the film. Uh, yes, hello? <laughs> Gosh, man, this is horrifying. If we lose Jess, I'm gonna be upset. I don't like her chances right here. Jesus, you scared the hell out of me! <laughs> what? I really thought she was dead. Peter is suspect number one, though. How the heck is he here and didn't know the killer was here? How did the recital go? How do you think it went? I thought you wanted to talk, so why didn't you quit attacking me and we try to have a rational adult conversation? Yes. Now stay on the line! Along with Barb, as I mentioned before, she's doing a great job with her performance as well. All the people in the film feel very genuine, partly because I don't recognize anybody. We're very busy here. There's been a child murdered in the park. Probably just one of your boyfriends playing a little joke. Yeah, well, I'll report it and try to get a man on it just as soon as possible. Dude, this is such a massive issue, just dismissing all of the problems. I'm leaving the conservatory. I've lived in one room for eight years, and I'm tired of it. I'm quitting the conservatory, and we're getting married. <laughs> Not a very romantic proposal right there. Took her by surprise. Do you remember when we first met and I told you about some of the things that I wanted to do? I still want to do those things. You can't ask me to drop everything because your plans have changed. Yeah, this kind of seems somewhat one-sided from the conversations we've seen. Peter seems to want to control everything. You could still do anything you wanted to do. Peter, I don't want to marry you. All right. What about the baby? I uh, didn't want to bother you with it, sir. <laughs> oh, clever cat once again. Peter didn't take that quite as hard as I thought he would because she just got straight to the point. <laughs> what exactly is that guy laughing about right now? Just the circumstance or what? Doesn't seem like a very funny thing. Could I speak to you for a minute? <laughs> What's this? Well, that's the number at the sorority house. <laughs> oh, they're laughing about that. Okay, rightfully roasting him for that. Dude's so gullible. I know. Something dirty, ain't it? Dude, getting absolutely clowned right now. He has some hidden anger in his eyes, though. I was ready for him to go on a rampage. Are you the person who called the station today? Yes. I would like to put a tap on your phone, but we'll need your written permission to do that if it's okay with you. And I'd like to see Claire Harrison's room. Gotta get somebody to have a reason to go up to the attic. That's the jackpot of info. I've tapped this phone so that when it rings, it'll ring at the station house, too. I'll be at the phone company checking on the location of the source of the call. You're gonna have to keep this guy on the line as long as possible. Oh, gosh. I'm excited for that potential scene right there, but he also could be hearing everything they're talking about, so it might not even work. I don't know if he's still in the attic. We've got one of our men in it, so you've got nothing to worry about. Yeah, sure. Uh... 
Yo, Peter, my guy, why are you acting so strange? <laughs> he is looking really, really bad right now. One thing I've felt about the camera work so far, though, kind of reminds me of the camera work in The Exorcist. Could also just be because both well-shot horror movies. I'm sorry, Jess. I guess I'm just exhausted. Will you be okay if I go up to bed? Yes, of course. Are you sure? Yes. Uh, anytime anyone goes upstairs, I feel like they're next on the target list, but now her and Barb are gonna be up there. Call me if there's any news. Thanks. My pill. Good night. And one thing I like that they've done with the characters, though, is even though some of them are a bit more eccentric, like Barb, none of them are unlikable, so you care about each one of them, so when they die, it feels even worse. Oh man, the phone thing's not gonna work, he's already just coming down. Those POV shots are so effective. Gosh, dude, she's alive. I'm shocked. Really thought she was getting choked out for a second. I guess I had a, a, a nightmare. I dreamed a stranger was coming in my room. Oh, man, that's so freaky. Why did he leave, though? That was the perfect opportunity to kill her. They have some good voices, although this noise is a good cover for him to kill somebody, the killer. Oh, Dan, and she's not gonna hear anything. It's me, Billy. It's alright. Shh. Pretty Agnes. <laughs> Whoever voices that guy or plays that character does an excellent job. You know what we did, Agnes. Agnes. Oh my gosh, they filmed that so well. Horrifying imagery. Poor freaking Barb, dude. <laughs> this is so well edited, man. All the technical aspects are so far beyond what I was expecting. There was a little girl murdered over in the park tonight. Yes, I heard. Your phone's ringing. Oh, dude, I have chills. Here we go. Man, I'm on the edge of my seat. I didn't mention it before because there was so much else happening, but very curious who Agnes is. Oh my gosh, dude, that's so freaky. Is he doing all these voices himself? Because I don't think there's anybody else with him in the attic. Just like having a wart removed. Oh my god. Ah, dang it. Did they not keep him on the line long enough? Such grotesque descriptions, though, whenever he calls. We didn't get him. You'll have to keep him on the line longer. Before, did he use more than one voice like this? Yes, yes, he did. He used several different voices. Oh, man. <laughs> I am so worried for her safety right now. He repeated almost word for word what Peter said to me tonight. Couldn't it just be a coincidence? God, Phil, I don't know. Oh, I don't think I made that connection before. I must have forgotten the lines. Jess, God, please help me. Yo, is it Peter, dude? Because the killer was saying, help me on the phone before. We can't kill David. Please, Jess, we can't kill the baby. Where are you? Please, Jess, Jess, don't hurt. Dang, man, he is pretty broken up. I guess it's understandable, but I don't know if I trust him. You want to tell me what that's all about? You listen to that? Yes. What did he mean about killing the baby? Jess, it's important that you tell me. Yeah, I guess from his perspective, he could think it's worse than what it actually is. Kind of ambiguous language. We can't kill the baby. That's a strange way of putting it. Dude, that angle, man, he's in the room with them. Gosh, dude, that's frightening. Was Peter with you any of the times that you got one of these calls? He was at the house tonight when the first call came. That's right, it couldn't be Peter. Dude, the use of shadow is so effective. I don't think until the killer is caught that Peter is safe. You're doing fine, I'll talk to you later. Thank God. I knew it couldn't have been Peter. Well, what can I tell you? Oh my God. 
much. Are we really not gonna do anything else with that moment? Love the subtleties of some of the horror in this. Tell them I want all records on a Peter Smythe. You know, the cinematography adds so much to every moment. When it does some of those push-ins, it's almost like it's pulling you against your will to look at something. Barb, are you awake? Bro, what, man? No, we lose her too. Is Jess gonna be the last one alive? Phil? Are you there? Phil? Oh man, here we go. She better keep him on the line this time. I feel like this is the last chance. The crazy part is that they're just gonna trace it to the same house. Hello? No, no, really, no. <laughs> oh my gosh. I hope whoever this guy was got some more work in the future because his voice is perfect for horror films. He's so menacing. Maybe his conversations here are reliving something in his past that traumatized him. Where's Agnes? <laughs> hey, baby. Baby, all right, mommy. It's through 140, terminal 55. Let's go, man. They found it. At least they'll know he's in the house so they can quarantine him or surround it. Calls are coming from number six, Belmont Street. Got it wrong. That's where the calls are going into. That's where they're coming from, too, sir. <laughs> This is so good. I knew that was happening already, but the way they delivered those lines with the music still sent some chills. Jennings. Jennings. Jennings, where the hell are you? Oh gosh, I had a feeling that cop was gonna get taken out at some point. Surprised we never actually saw it happen. Now I want you to do exactly what I tell you. Put the phone back on the hook, walk to the front door, and leave the house. What's wrong? Jess is too smart. I feel like she's gonna know what's going on. The calls are coming from the house. Jess! Jess! Get up! And don't go up there! <laughs> Dude, this filmmaking is elite. This is one of the few times I'm like really, really freaked by a horror movie or something because it's not ever really in your face or anything. It just does such a great job at building atmosphere. <gasps> Oh, good delivery right there. It's all hitting her now. Too late. And now the killer knows she knows. Bro, Jess is so brave. Are you kidding me? She's actually gonna face him. She's got some sort of weapon, but I don't think she has the upper hand. It's so brutal. I was really afraid the killer was gonna jump out right when she opened it. Agnes, it's me, Billy. Agnes, you tell what we did, Agnes. Dude, that guy is so creepy. Just seeing the eye was nearly paralyzing, dude. So good. <laughs> Now we have ramped it up big time, my gosh. <laughs> Dude can change personalities on a dime. Went from full rage to nothing. Oh man, can actually breathe. This is some pretty white knuckle stuff, man. Had me sweating. Man, every time he pops up, they find an interesting way to film his character, and it's always so spooky. And I love that most of the time they don't rely on soundtrack or sound effects, just the ambient sounds make it feel a little bit more real. Jess? Jess, are you alright? Bro, is that Peter? I can't quite make him out through the window. I would not go out there though.
<laughs> Very rightfully, she's backing up. Do not trust him. There is no way Peter is always just here. Jess? Jess? Friend Jess for me. <laughs> <laughs> He's so creepy. The camera work is so dang good right now. What are you doing around here? <laughs> Man, this is such a brilliant script, dude. Keeps you guessing. Even in that moment, I'm not 100% sure if he's good or bad. Yo, what the- Oh, she's still alive! Are you serious? How do we trust it, though? Because I don't feel like we know of a certainty it's Peter. It's hard to believe Jess would kill anybody, much less Peter. How long do you think it'll be before I can talk to him? Out for at least four hours, and pretty groggy after that. I'll see where it'll end. Man, shout out to Jess, dude. She was so brave. Freaking faced him head on. The girl's father's upstairs, but he can't tell you. Would you keep it down, please? We've got a sick girl in here. <laughs> Not here. That's what I'm Man, I'm still on edge even though I feel like I should be happy and relieved right now. That's how you know the movie is so good. Accomplished exactly what it's set out to do. Hey, Lieutenant. Hey, you. Come on. Ow, ow. You want to spend the night in the can? Jesus, what's the matter with this guy? Suffering from shock. Man, this shot is so good, dude. I love that we're just hanging on it. I'm waiting for somebody to pop out. Oh my gosh, dude, this has got to be one of the best freaking shots I've seen in a horror movie. Because just beyond that frame right there, hanging there, it's been going on forever. <laughs> dude, are you kidding me? It wasn't Peter. Who the heck is it then? Because all freaking things led to him, so I'm surprised the killer's still out there. Dude, this is perfection. I love that it's just ambient noises right now. It just adds this weight, makes it feel so much darker. <laughs> Dude, that's freaking brilliant, man. The phone once again. The cycle starts all over. Bro, no way. <laughs> what a flawless ending. Dude, this movie is so good. So much better than I ever expected. My goodness. I was mentioning in the beginning, I was hoping to get a good Christmas themed horror movie. This is one of the best horror movies I've seen in general. This is incredible stuff. And the ringing just gets louder and louder. Every time a phone rings, I'm going to be freaked out. As fantastic as Scream is, I think this is the pinnacle of spooky phone calls in movies, at least so far. I am blown away by this film. I have so many positive things about it. I don't think there's really a single negative thing I have to say about it. It was just so well made, and you can tell that not only the filmmakers cared about the film, they were really trying to make it look and sound and feel solid but beyond just caring about that stuff they're really really talented as well this is one of the best shot horror films i think i've seen just because of their understanding of how to use the camera to add intensity and horror to a scene and how sound should be used sparingly and very carefully and precise in order to not take away from the atmosphere that you're creating and the script also was just so well written and so tight felt like the pacing was done excellently and the absolute boldness of them ending the film like that i think is so effective as well because it leaves you with that feeling of dread it doesn't end even though the film ends i don't know if there was a sequel to this i don't think so because as far as i know there's just this one the 2019 one and then i think there's another one in like early 2000s or something but wasn't called Black Christmas 2 or anything like that and so honestly that makes me love it even more because you really just don't get any sort of release you're still freaked out at the end of it knowing the killer's still there 
and it probably means that Jess is still going to die, unfortunately, even after all she did. And speaking of her, and I guess all the other characters as well, they were all so well portrayed and they were surprisingly well-rounded as well. All of them, whether they were kind of the main couple of characters or even some more side characters, they all felt like they had some substance to them, whether it were little conversations that happened over the course of the film or just physical actions, different things very subtly added to their character arcs or their character attributes. So you felt like they were all real distinct people. And so I really appreciated that because in my opinion, Opinion, a horror movie is only as effective as its ability to make you care for the characters because if you don't really mind what happens to them the situations are never really that stressful because whether they live or die is inconsequential but this one every character you didn't want them to die even someone like Peter you were still apprehensive about him but you were never a hundred percent sure whether you should trust him or not and so just so many great dynamics as far as the storytelling goes and I appreciated some of the themes and messages it discussed as well never in your face like I mentioned during the film it definitely has some stuff in there that you can dig into more and you can take more out of it but whether or not you do that I don't think it affects the narrative strength at all but I am excited to dig a little bit deeper into it since it's so old now at this point I feel like there's plenty of information articles analysis about it and so I'm excited to look up that and one of the other major strengths I loved about the film is just how it makes you feel trapped as an audience pretty much throughout the entire runtime because whether it's the killer being shown in the house and other times not being shown in there you always feel like his presence is kind of nearby so you never feel safe and you never feel like you can really truly escape him or the camera work always being so precise and one thing I just kind of thought about is I don't feel like there's ever a moment in the film where the non POV shots of the killer are done handheld or anything like that I always feel like it's done either on a tripod or on some sort of dolly or something like that so the only kind of natural more human tone to the camera work comes with the killer and so I feel like in a subtle sort of way it makes you feel visually that the killer is kind of always in control because his camera is more erratic and whatnot where whenever we're with the other characters it's just so static and kind of more locked off and so it just makes you feel like you don't have control or those characters don't have control I don't know if that was the intention because obviously POV angles are usually kind of more handheld and haphazard but just kind of a cool thought that I had and I feel like it contributed to me feeling that way throughout it so in addition to the camera work though I also loved the sound design of the film the soundtrack was great when it was used but obviously that was done sparingly but the sound effects and everything were solid always contributed to the spooks and there's just something so kind of warm and enticing about the way audio sounds from the 70s which this came out in the 70s right and the 80s just kind of that era because it's not perfectly crisp or clear or anything like that nothing wrong with that obviously I love a good sounding film in that regards but just kind of adds this more nostalgic feel I guess to it don't know exactly how to describe it but definitely love that aspect of it all the technical aspects I thought were top tier about as good as you could get but I really look forward to hearing your thoughts on the film and if there's any other theories about what happened out there if there is some sort of sequel maybe the 2000s one the early 2000s black christmas is worth checking out obviously the 2019 one doesn't give me hope for that but I feel like it'd be impossible to top this one, but I absolutely loved it, had a great time. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching along with me for it, and if you did, definitely consider leaving a thumbs up, but I look forward to seeing you all for the next movie reaction, and until then, peace.